Well, good morning. Today I'm at Arundel, um, back on the stretch below Cheremy Bridge. Uh, it's first time on this, this section this season, and it looks like I'm the first person down here because there's uh, been no swims cut out at all. Anyway, today I'm just going to fish hemp, tears, and casters to hand, uh, six metres to hand on a whip, and uh, see how it goes. So I've just popped four balls of uh, ground bait in with hemp and caster and uh, I've had a quick run over it with a maggot and had two or three skimmers and I'm just about to start on the hemp and tares or caster on hook and start loose feeding in a minute so I'll come back to you and see how we're getting on. Lost a big skimmer on a tear. Um, shame about that, it's about, about 12 ounces, but a nice fish. But never mind. Okay, bait menu is pretty simple today, just got a few hemp and tears in here. Some casters for the hook, loose feeding a few of them as well. If it gets really desperate, I've got some red maggots. Um, but apart from that, that's it. So I'm going to have to make it work. Okay, quick look at the gear we're using today. Um, as I mentioned earlier, I'm fishing six metres to hand. Uh, the swim's about eight and a half to nine foot deep, and the flow's just just creeping through. It's hardly moving. It was moving quite. It was moving nicely when I got here, but it seems to have just eased up um, the last hour or so. Anyway, this is what we're using: a gram and a half float. It's a body up. This originally started life as a Drennan Carbo. I think they're called Carbo, weren't they? Yeah, Dren and Carbo. And I've just flipped the tip and the uh, stem round so the, it's a body up rather than a body down pattern. So we've got that. That's on um, 012 main line. And then about four foot from the uh, hook, I've got a bulk in the form of a Olivet. And I've got one, two number eight shots, 
and I've got two number 10 shots down to an 010 hook length and a Preston N10 in a size 16. I started off on an 18 but because I've been swinging most of the fish in I just changed to, an, uh, changed to a 16 just to give me a bit more confidence and uh, been quite pleased I've only, only dropped one fish off and I've had quite a few now so um, the hook's, hook's done really well, stayed sharp and uh, not, like I say not dropped many off. Anyway the session's started off really quite well. Four bulls ground bait, straight in over the top with a couple of maggots, another skimmer about 10 ounces. Put a pair of casters on and over, over the ground bait again at full depth and had another skimmer and I had another skimmer before I had a bleak. I had two or three bleaks so I changed straight over to the tears and within 20-25 minutes I had them, I had them queuing up. Um, then I got a feeling the pike moved in um, because it all just went really really iffy and uh, then I hooked a small pike and it's been coming in fits and starts you know I'll catch a few fish in 10 minutes 15 minutes and then it'll go quiet for 10 or 15 minutes but I've been plugging away and I've got a few pounds so no to grumble about kept it nice and simple today with the bait as I said earlier hemp tears and casters four balls of ground bait to start with and that was it just been loose speed thereafter and uh, the whip is my trusty old Shakespeare super team whip I reckon this must be 30 years old now and uh, I don't use it very often but sometimes I just like to show it the show it the light of day kind of justifies keeping it doesn't it but um, yeah it's performed well can't grumble I mean, it's only six meters so I'm a bit limited with it but um, until I get something newer and and more modern then uh, this is what we're stuck with but um, anyway we'll carry on see if we can catch a few more before we pack up because it's barbecue day at home so I can't be too long so catch you in a bit Not feed wise, I've just been popping in 10 or 15 runs of hemp and 3 or 4 casters each put in. Just steady. This this venue don't seem to respond well to feeding too heavy. I think you, you, you can kill it if you uh, go too hard at it. So I think you're better off just tickling it in and uh, seeing how it goes. I've well, just gone a few minutes without, without getting a bite, so um, I just took a foot off my deck and just had a fish, so I'm interested to see if we get another one or whether well, that's just a flash in the pan. Okay, we've got it again now. I've uh, had four hours. As I said earlier, got to get home because we've got a barbecue, so um, I can't hang around. It's been an enjoyable session, although not easy. It started off, and I thought it was on for a boatload the way it started. And then it just got tricky, and uh, I had to work pretty hard for my fish today. But nevertheless, I've had quite a few fish. I don't know what I've got. I'll have a way up in a minute. I'll have a look at the catch. But, um, you know, by moving my shot in around and 
altering my feeding patterns and my depth and all sorts of things. Anything I can do, just altering the way the rig's going through, holding it back. Actually, I've, I've had I've hooked some fish inching the bait upstream. Uh, I did this the other the other week on the Trent, actually fishing the Waggler. Uh, what I was doing, I was getting down towards the end of my trot, and then I just gently wind it back. And what I do, because obviously the waggler goes underwater when you wind it back, is actually just watch the rod tip. And I caught quite a lot of <laughs> roach that way. But um, today on the uh, on the whip, it's not not worked that well, but I, it has picked me up some extra fish. So, like I say, the good thing about fishing one method and one line, which is something I do quite often, well for me anyway, and I think I don't know if you you'll agree, is that what it does, it makes you actually think about what you're doing. It makes you work harder um, and you you know where you think the limitations of your equipment are you can actually find there's there's a bit more in there than you thought just by altering and having to work at it rather than tossing it up the bank and picking up the feeder rod or whatever you what else what else you would do so like I say I've had a few sessions lately where I've just fished one method one line and worked at it and I've caught fish so you know, can't complain. And it's simple, you don't got to set up heaps of kit, um, and especially for these short sessions, it's, it's nice there's not so much to back up, so, um, don't know, give it a go if you want, see you get on, let me know. Um, but like I say, it's good to think about your fishing, and today I've had to think about my fishing. Anyway, we'll have a weigh up, we'll have a look, we'll catch you in a minute. Well, there we go, there's the fruits of the labour. 16 pounder mainly roach, there's a few skimmers and a few dace in there and odd perch. So, not a bad catch. Well, okay, that was a good, good little session, quite enjoyed that and uh, can't complain. Could have probably had more if I'd have fished the, fished the pole. And I had two or three different rigs set up so I could actually present my bait more where they wanted it and where they wanted it in, in the water depth wise but like I say that forced me to work hard with what I'd got so 16 pounds is a good reward for four hours fishing so till next time catch you out there cheers bye <music>